All right, get ready, because tonight's Future of Everything is mind-bending, or actually mind-reading, because it's looking a lot more like AI is capable of reading our thoughts, and we're not just talking about it predicting what kind of TikTok we want to see next or what kind of product we might buy. This next breakthrough is a lot deeper, all the way down to the very tissue of our brains, where researchers have used AI to translate brain scans into text. Now, for the study, scientists at UT Austin created a 3D view of a person's brain while they listened, watched, or imagined a story. And see, we've got it for you right there. That pink stuff, all that pink stuff means above average brain activity, and the blue spots have below average brain activity. And to us, we see that and we're like, okay, that part's activated, that part's not. That part's activated, that part's not. That part's activated, that part's not. But researchers say the AI was able to read the brain waves and translate all of that that you're seeing right there into English and turn it into what looks like inner dialogue. Inner dialogue. Dialogue. This is a real leap forward compared to um, what's been done before, which is typically on like single words or short sentences where you can get something about the gist of a sentence or something about, you know, what a word is related to. Uh, but we're getting whole strings of text, pretty complicated ideas. OK, so. What does that actually look like? Check this out. Here are the volunteers, and the volunteers were asked to watch a movie clip without audio, and this is what the AI described. You're seeing it right there, actual stimulus, and they described, I see a girl that looks just like me get hit on her back, and then she is knocked off, end quote. The eyes saw it, the brain processed it, and the AI top typed out what they were thinking. Typed out what they were thinking. Typed out what they were thinking. I just, like, I'm still trying to figure out how that would even work. With us now is Nita Far uh, Farahani. She is a futurist, an ethicist, a law professor at Duke University, the author of Battle for Your Brain, Defending the Right to Think Freely in the Age of Neurotechnology. Uh, welcome, doctor. So researchers are saying that they hope that this could one day help victims of, of like a stroke. But how do you see this type of technology being used? I think it has tremendous promise in that it actually offers potentially people who have blocked in syndrome, suffering from ALS or other conditions to uh, be able to have their thoughts interpreted into speech so that they could communicate with the outside world. It also has um, a potential for everyday people to use it. And when that starts to happen, I start to worry about what it looks like for mental privacy and for freedom of thought of individuals. Now, just to be clear, like in this case, People are sticking electrodes. In. I mean, there's a lot of monitoring. No, no, that goes there's in, no right? electrodes. There's a lot of I mean, so one of the things, yeah. I mean, one of the things that's extraordinary about this is there are no electrodes. This is okay. um, a big machine. It's a functional magnetic resonance imaging machine. That means that people went into this machine uh, non-invasively without any electrodes inside of the huh. brain that they were able to pick up blood flow changes in their brain. And one of the things that's incredibly remarkable about this study is not only the precision of what they picked up, but then they decided to test and see if the model that they created, which was using GPT-1, generative AI, we're all talking about ChatGPT these days, um, they wanted to see if they could use that same classifier on a portable system, not a big bulky device like fMRI. So they tried it out on something called FNIRS, functional near infrared spectroscopy, which is a wearable device, something that people could use in their everyday lives to track their brain health, to track their um, you know, everyday focus and mind wandering. They found that they could get the same level of precision using that kind of portable device with the classifier that they had developed. In other words, everyday mind reading may be possible using devices that we may come to use in our everyday lives. Uh, is non-invasive and GPT-1. So this was done before GPT-4. We right. don't know what's yeah. on the horizon. Uh, I mean, <laughs> your book talks about mental privacy. Uh, what are yes. your concerns when it comes to AI and other neurotechnologies that, that could infringe on that? 
So the coming future that I see is the use of everyday brain wearables. People are used to wearing, for example, sensors that track their heart rate or track their sleep activity in the form of a watch or a ring. Now, companies like Meta and Snap are starting to buy and develop their own neurotechnology to put sensors that track brain activity into everyday devices like earbuds or headphones that people could use to take a conference call but also track their brain activity, which can be promising for things like tracking brain health or tracking focus and attention. But it also means that the very same corporations who are commodifying all of our personal data are suddenly going to have access to what's happening in our own brains. And then I fear that our right to mental privacy, our right to freedom of thought could substantially be interfered with. We've already seen that kind of interference with things like Cambridge Analytica. When you can start to have much more precise access to what people are thinking and feeling and then change what they're seeing in their social media or the kinds of algorithms that are feeding different information to them and uh, the platforms that they interact with, I worry that there's a future that we're just not ready for. Nita, I feel like we should be talking to you every single day. I hope you come back. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for this conversation, and hopefully it's it's one of many more to come. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And that me. does it for us tonight. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.